late afternoon and and it's a cautionary word uh, as I believe we hopefully this week wrap up the relationship series Amen. it's a cautionary word and I'm going to try and really extrapolate as much as I can Amen. from the we're going to read quite a couple of scriptures this morning Amen. Uh, which is very unusual for me because when we teach usually I will teach from one scripture this morning I'm going to move through three or four scriptures I want us to open our Bibles to a very unfamiliar passage of Scripture. The passage of the only passage of Scripture that Christians are afraid to open. They don't want to open this book. They feel like this book is trembling. It holds conversations that nobody wants to hear. The book of Songs of Solomon. <laughs> Sure, why you love him? <laughs> the songs of Solomon. Amen. 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 I know what's going through your mind already. Lord, help them, deliver them right now. <laughs> the songs of Solomon, chapter number two, verse number fifteen. <clears throat> songs of Solomon, chapter number two, verse number fifteen. Songs of Solomon is the third book in the New Testament. <laughs> You're still looking for it. It's easy for you to find. Songs of Solomon, chapter 2, verse number six, verse number 15. I nearly said second Songs of Solomon. <laughs> songs of Solomon, chapter 2, verse number 15. I want us to read together from the uh, New King James Version. Let's read at the count of three. One, two, three, let's read. Catch us the foxes. Okay, I, I want us all to read. We can read on the screen if you have not found it in your Bible. One, two, three, let's read. Catch us the foxes, the little foxes that spoil the vines. For our vines have tender grapes. Let's read again. One, two, three. Catch us the, li the foxes, the little foxes that spoil the vines. For our vines have tender grapes. Father, we thank you for the reading of your word. In the mighty, precious name of Jesus, we pray. Amen and amen. amen. I want to share with you this morning on a, a very peculiar subject, which is still in the relationship series. And the subject is death by good. Death by good. It's quite interesting that we enjoy good things. How many of us enjoy good things? Okay, can we do an altar call before we continue for those that don't enjoy good things? <laughs> I love I love having good things in my life, and I always pray that God gives me good things. But it is quite weird and quite tricky when death comes from good things. When death comes from good things. The Songs of Solomon is known as a February book because it's a book of love and a book of... It sounds like it's, it's, it was created for marriage. Amen. If you read it, you might run away. Some of the things that are said there are shocking. They're scary, but they're in the Bible. Let's not go into details. It's a book that, on face value, it seems like it is a relationship between a man and a woman. Amen. 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 On face value, it seems like it's a relationship between a man and a woman. And indeed, on face value, it looks like a relationship between a man and a woman. But on spiritual value, it is the relationship between a bride and a groom. Amen. Amen. The bride being the church mm -hmm. and the groom being Christ. Amen. When Christ is the groom, and if we were to contextualize it very into, into our own levels and into our own marriages, when Christ is the groom we understand that he heads the family Amen. because he's the head of the family Amen. whenever a head is taken out everything malfunctions Amen. when this thing moves out everything else malfunctions 
It functions. But it functions amiss. Mm. And he said, unfortunately, in most places, most families, most hearts, I am no longer the head. Mm. And when I am no longer the head, there is malfunction mm. in that place. Now, I want you to imagine with me, I, I can't practicalize this on here. I, I would have tried. I tried to think about how I'm going to get it done. But I, I want you to imagine with me if my feet were here and my head was down there. Imagine how weird it would look seeing a head down there and the feet up here. And he said, unfortunately, that's how my church is looking. Because now the head, which is me, is down there. I'm the last to be consulted. I'm not the first to be called. When everything else has failed and everyone else has failed, then I become important. He says, but when, 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 when everyone else who's your friend, who's your mate, who's this and that, has failed to, 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 to help you out, then you realize, oh, there's Jesus. And he says, the relationship is upside down. Where you are supposed to start, you are ending. And I know many of us might have gotten the call. When you are called as an afterthought. Have you ever been called as an afterthought? When, when, when you realize the only time they are calling me is because there is no one else. Or everyone else failed. Not because you are important. Imagine how defending you feel. When you become the last in the pecking order. And not because you can, you are believed that you can do what we are asking you to do. Just because, uh, we, we, well, what can we do? We've got no one else. No, but you know if she won't do a good job. No, it's fine. We'll just accept. And that's how many of us make Jesus feel. When he's supposed to be the center, he's decentered. We deal with other people first. When all have failed, when my boss, when my job, when my everything has failed, then I, oh, I'm a Christian after all. Oh, I can't even pray. Oh. And some of us have put him aside to try everything else and everything has failed. Until it fails, then we realize he exists. Let's check quickly here before we get into scripture. When Solomon writes, he says, Catch us the foxes, the little foxes that destroy the vines, right? For our vines have got tender grapes. Now, when he talks about foxes, a fox is a very sly animal. Very small, very small. It's part of the cat, of the cat family. Very small. A very sly animal. But one of the things I realized about foxes is that foxes don't live on trees like leopards. Mm. Mm. Okay. They don't live on trees. Foxes live in holes. Okay. Mm. I want you to keep that in mind. Foxes live in what? Mm. In holes. They don't live on trees. Mm. Now, <coughs> what? Because when leopards live on trees, it's easy to spot them because they need to go up. Yeah. But foxes, because they live in holes, it means they dig a, 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 a home in the soil that has the vine. Mm. Okay. So they come and they settle inside or underneath the vine. Mm. Now, he says, the little foxes. Now, Jesus says, I am the true vine. In John chapter number 15, he says, I am what? The true vine. And no one can bear fruit unless they are attached to, to me, the true vine. Now, it's interesting that foxes are destroying what? Vines. They are not destroying orchards of apples. They are not destroying, they are destroying what? Vines. Now, the power of a vine does not lie in where it's planted. The power of a vine lies in its ability to connect. Can I, can I bring it home a bit? Yeah. When we used to try and plant vines, which which were grape, 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 
fruit or grape, grape trees or, 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 or grapes at home. What I would realize is that before my mom plants the seed, she would put a pole next to the seed. She puts another one. Like a goalpost. I'm thinking they're building a stadium, a whole stadium just for me. But my God, it was not a stadium. It was actually so that the vine grows by connection. Yeah. It means where there is disconnection, the vine stops. I want you to hear me. So many of us have grown to a certain level. But when we have grown, we have decided to disconnect. And when we disconnect, growth stops because the vine does not grow where there is no connection. And when you plant the vine next to the fence, you know, next to the fence of your neighbor, mm. you know, before you know it, you no longer see the neighbor. Mm. The whole fence is infiltrated by the vine. Mm. Now, there are places where you are seeing too much of your neighbor. Mm. And he says there must be a vine in between. Mm. There must be a vine yeah. that is planted so that all you see is not your neighbor, yeah. but all you see is Christ yeah. connected to him to a certain extent when that people bring solutions to you say, wait a minute with your solution. Already. You cut it while it was still growing. And he says, be careful of the little foxes. Now, he speaks of size. Size is very important. He speaks of size. He says, they are little. They are, they are not big. They are little. In other words, their impact is not immediately felt. Oh my word. Their presence is not immediately felt. But the, 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 the lack of feeling impact is not their absence. Yeah. The fact that you don't feel the impact of the, of, of the foxes does not mean they are absent. Mm. Huh. No. Now, let's talk. Three good things. I'll talk three things today. Three good things that kill relationship with the Lord. Three good things. I've got 20 minutes to do this. Three good things that kill relationship with the Lord. Number one. Do you talk about me? Chapter number eight. <laughs> Let's go to verse number ten. Deuteronomy chapter number eight. Verse number ten. Mm. The first thing. The Bible says, When you have eaten and you are full, mm. then you shall bless the Lord your God Amen. for the good land which he has given you. Verse number eleven, continue. Then he says, beware that you do not forget the Lord your God. Beware that you do not forget. When we are full, we are easily forgetful. It is a good thing to be full. But it is foolish to be full. Enough to be a fool to forget the one who fed you. And the problem is, number one, when you are too full, you can destroy relationship. So many people were faithful when they had lack. My word, my God. They gave everything they had when they had nothing. They gave every tithe, every offering when they had nothing. But the moment they were full, the moment they had whatever they desired, they walked away. And he said, my church walks away when they're full. I've seen their tendencies. The moment they have eaten, they forget the feeder. The moment they have eaten, they never send congratulations to the feeder. Mm. 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 And what? He says, beware mm. that you do not forget the Lord. Now, beware simply means, mm. I want you to watch something. Beware simply means, right? You're going to tiptoe and come to me, right? You can't tiptoe. You cannot tiptoe. I pray for them. You're going to tiptoe and come to me. Now watch. Beware simply means that it comes slowly. If you are not wary, this thing will catch you while you are standing. 
Now watch what the Bible says. The Bible says, do not grow weary in well-doing. In other words, it grows. It grows. The weariness does not come immediately. It grows. It grows. Some of you, the moment you were blessed, growing distance was growing. Distance was growing. When you had enough money, you never prayed like you used to. When you had enough money, you never you never attended a church like you used to. But you don't understand that beware. It means that the weariness is catching up with you. Oh, pastor, when you had 200 members, you prayed every morning. But now that you have 2,000 members, you are no longer seeking the face of the Lord. You feel you are too experienced to seek and to need Him. When you have eaten and you are full, the question is, who ate? Who ate? It's you. But when the stomach influences the mind, it becomes a problem. It becomes a problem. And so many, let me, let me be practical now. So many marriages have died because we were too familiar with the blessing. We were eating every day so much that we never appreciated what we were eating. We, we were eating enough so that we were too full every day. And the Lord decided, oh, maybe it's hunger that will wake you up that I'm still God. My Jesus. My Jesus. Your can you be faithful when you are full? Oh my Jesus. Can you still continue seeking the Lord when you have eaten and are full? Oh man. Watch. Continue reading. We are verse number 11. Watch. Forget the Lord. Do not forget the Lord your God by not keeping his call. Oh, so you can start not keeping because you have eaten. So eating can make you not to keep his commandments and create new commandments that are not his. Watch, watch, watch. Oh, 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 oh. His judgments and his statutes which I command you today. Continue. Verse number 12. So that we can finish quickly. Lest when you have eaten and are full and have built, built. Oh, so it's not only eating. You have also built. You know when people have built, they forget the builder. Beautiful houses, and we forget the builder. Unless the Lord builds a house, those that build, they build in vain. The problem is you have already built. You know, before you built, you were faithful. Before you built, you were in relationship for real, for real, real, for real, 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 real. You were in relationship before you built, but once you build, you locked yourself in what was built yeah. and left the builder outside. Come on now. He says, I am knocking. I'm at the door. But no one is opening for me. You know why? There is knocking on the door he built. But the, the occupants are too occupied by the building that they forget the one who built. And some of us are too occupied with the blessing of the Lord. We have forgotten to relate with him. We keep the blessing comfortable, but we don't keep the blesser comfortable. Thank you, Jesus. Starting a relationship is awesome. You know the early stages? I can't hang up my phone. Can you hang up? I'm not going to hang up. Can you hang up? I can't feel it. Oh, God. I'm just going to put the phone on the pillow. Experience. <laughs> but starting a relationship is easy, but maintaining, maintaining what you started, hey, 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 maintaining. Some of us are good at starting, but when we are blessed, we don't maintain. What's your stage right now? What's your relationship status with him? Are you in a situation ship or are you in a relationship? Situationship. <laughs> are you now too blessed to have time with him? Oh. It's only I woke up, I prayed. And the Lord said, Don't ask too much, just have time with me. I realized, 
When, before I had a church, I, I, I had time. Now, because I'm leading a church, I don't have time. You are going to fall into a situation very soon. I've got 15 minutes. Watch. Then he says, Oh, guys, did you really put that up? Oh, God. What? When he said, When you have eaten in the full and have built beautiful houses and dwell in them, continue. Verse number 13. And when your herds and your flocks multiply, <laughs> when your herds and your flocks multiply, some of the pockets are not multiplying because he knows what you will become if it multiplies. <laughs> he knows you. He's scared of you. He's, yeah, he knows. What that person that will come out when you have money, my God. Oh, 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 oh. We're going to have problems. Come on now. It's not because he's not hearing a prayer. No, he knows the character. Yeah. That when you, when you, when you, when you, when if you are blessed, Jesus is a forgotten story. And Sometimes the devil blesses to cause forgetfulness. Yeah. Blesses, I mean, he releases a material thing. Mm -hmm. He knows the effects of that material thing. Mm -hmm. Have you seen how, and I'm going back to a relationship again in marriage, have you seen how when you had nothing, you loved each other so much? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Amen. When you're still in that in that in that uh, flat in Sunnyside, yeah. you guys loved each other so much. <laughs> but when things came mm. apart in the school, mm. when cars came, mm. it was a question: whose names are they in? It's not your car. We started taking care of what we have mm. more than who we have. Thank you. Continue. <laughs> Watch, continue. Guys, guys, get it back. Continue. 13, 14, I think we're going to 14. It's 14. When your heart is lifted up, so your heart was once down. Yeah. Mm -hmm. When your heart is lifted up and you forget the Lord your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt from the house of bondage. Now, I want you to watch. You were brought out. Yeah. You did not choose to come out. Yes. Ah, let's talk, let's talk. You know very well that it had nothing to do with you. It was the Lord who did that work. Yeah. It was the Lord who saved you from being retrenched that day. You knew that your position was listed all of a sudden the morning that the execution was about to be done your position was deleted we still need you no it was the lord who was involved in there but when your heart is lifted up be careful of a lifted heart be careful of a lifted heart because when the heart is lifted it draws further apart from the lord verse number 15 16 17 then we done then we go to the next point what verse number 15 when you led, who led you through the great and terrible wilderness, in which were fiery serpents and scorpions and thirsty land, where there was no water? Who brought you water for you? So, so who brought water for you out of the filthy rock, or flinty rock? Continue, verse number sixteen. Who fed you in the wilderness with manna, which your fathers did not know, that he might humble you and that he might test you to 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 to, to do you good in the end? Now he humbled you, he tested you through the wilderness. Continue, verse number seventeen, the last verse. That then you say in your heart. My power and might and the might of my hand have gained me this wealth. Then you say in your heart. You know the way I preach how people can hear. Oh, I'm anointed. Then you say in your heart. You know the amount of money I'm making there. I can buy you out all, all, all of you. Right. I can pay every single person one of you, every single one of you, double your salary, the money I have made in my power. The moment it is no longer he, it is I, we are in trouble. We are in trouble. And so watch your language. Watch your language. When you are blessed, watch. Before you were blessed, Lord, please, please do something new in my life. Lord, please, when you are blessed, I think I have done well. I have done very well. Oh, wow, I've, 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 really, I've really accumulated. I've worked hard. Mm -hmm. Do you know where we come from? We come from a very bad place. And uh, you're spoiling. I'm trying not to swear. That's <laughs> wrong. We, we, we come from a very bad place. You know how much we've worked? When the language changes, the mannerisms change. Yeah. Can I give you a practical example? 
like I always do. I always ask this question like I don't. Like, watch. Watch. Have you ever seen a five year old, right? In the mall, hmm? arguing with his father over this toy and that toy? Mm. Have you ever seen that argument? I've seen it a couple of times in the malls. You, you all don't go to malls. You don't have five year olds. You don't have five year olds. <laughs> the Lord is preparing you for your future and you are refusing. Now watch, when you go there, 99.9% .9 of the time, yeah. the child is arguing in English. Yeah. 99.9% .9 of the time, they don't want this, I don't want this day. And 99.9% .9 of the time, the father is responding in English. Mm. But find a five-year-old who speaks only this way. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> and see them. I'm just choosing Zulu. can be very like a baby. Let's make it close. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and see them. And see them argue with their parent in their mother tongue. Mm. Mm. You will never know. You won't see it. Mm. It does not happen. Mm. It doesn't happen. Yes. When we changed languages, we changed many yeah. visits. Yeah. Yeah. I want you to observe it. Watch it. Watch it. When language changes, there are certain things that I'm privileged to that were never there. Yeah. It's the same thing that happens when you are blessed. Mm. When language changes, mm. we no longer kneel like we used to. Oh, oh God. Time is gone. Second thing. Watch. Numbers chapter 11, verse number 4 to 6. Numbers 11, verse 4 to 6. Watch yourself. Before you were blessed, how were you? Sure. Now that you are blessed, how are you? <laughs> now the mixed multitude who were among them yielded to intense craving. So the children of Israel also wept again and said, Who will give us meat to eat? Verse number five. We remember the fish which we ate freely in Egypt. The cucumbers, <laughs> the melons, the legs, the onions, the garlic. Verse number six, but now our whole being is dried up. There is nothing at all except this manna before our eyes. Now let's talk, what is manna? Manna is bread that was baked in heaven. Amen. It does not come from a, from a local bakery. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Local bakery. Yeah. It does not come from your, your baker store, whatever not. It comes from where? Yeah. Now, watch. People have tasted heaven. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. But because they are too familiar with heaven, relationship gets affected. Mm. Number two, when you become too familiar with the blessings, relationship gets affected. Let's be honest, right? Let's be honest. We can close our eyes if you're ashamed. Can we close our eyes? Let's all close our eyes. Close our eyes. All of us, except me, of course. <laughs> all close our eyes. I want you to raise up your hand in this last week, right? In this last week. If when you were praying, you said, Lord, I thank you that I'm woken up this morning. Put down your hand. Less than 25% of the church has thanked God for life. When you become too familiar with waking up in the morning, it just seems like a normal thing. Yeah. I've worked hard, I deserve it. I'm going to take care of my body. <laughs> <laughs> I go to gym every morning. 
if, if you take care of your body and you go to gym every morning, Bruce Lee should not have died. Exactly. You don't know Bruce Lee. <laughs> <laughs> he took care of his body better than you, and he still died. <laughs> when we become too familiar in relationship, yeah. Yeah. affection dies. Yeah, fish. Yeah, <laughs> I want you to hear me. I want you to hear me very well. When you know that every single month on the 25th of this time, he will be coming with groceries, do you know that you stop appreciating him? Mm. That's so true. It now becomes, when are you buying groceries? <laughs> when you know that every night you come back home, she has cooked. Do you know that you stop appreciating? The moment there is no food, you're like, where is the food? I never have you taken the time to say, thank you for cooking. Because we are too familiar, we lose appreciation. Appreciation depreciates whenever we are too familiar with the blessings. Amen. Nowhere in the Bible has anybody eaten bread from heaven. Even Jesus himself did not eat bread from heaven. But this one, they were full of blessings. <laughs> that they became empty of him. And now that which saved them in the desert was now. Hey, listen, I'm tired of manna. Can you give me manna? I want this and this. I want you to check your relationship with him. Thank you, Jesus. Are you not being killed by familiarity? You are too familiar that every morning he wakes you up. That you forgot it was not by might nor by power, it was by his spirit. You are too familiar that when you pray, he answers that you just say, Lord, I'm no longer going to pray. I know you hear me when I call. That relationship begins to depreciate. Mm. Lastly, mm. we're still in 10 minutes of your time on the other side of 12. And we wrap up. Psalm 42, verse 1 to 2. Very familiar passage of scripture. Can you even quote it? <laughs> As a deer panted for the water. <clears throat> the water brooks. So pants my soul for you, O God. My soul thirsts for God, for the living God. When shall I come and appear before God? When thirst is quenched, relationship is in trouble. When thirst yeah. is quenched, mm. relationship mm. is in trouble. I gave this story, I think it was during prayer. I'm going to give it again. While we were praying, and it was about four, if not four years ago, if not three, three and a half years ago. Remember the drought crisis that we had? the country, right? So I'm listening to talk radio in the morning and I'm driving to work. And the host says, we need to teach our people how to be disciplined with water. We need to get our people disciplined with water. I don't always call into radio shows, but I do sometimes. The day I felt the edge and I picked up the phone, I called. I said, sir, you want to teach people discipline. when there is nothing to be disciplined about. Mm -hmm. When there was water all these years, you never saw the need for discipline. Mm -hmm. It disappeared because the water was abandoned. Mm -hmm. But now because the water is not there, you want people to learn to be disciplined over what is not there. Mm -hmm. It does not make sense. And this is the trick. When there is an abundance of a thing, mm. we stop relating. Mm. 
We still good? Relating. Can I bring it home a bit? Some of us, we have stopped relating with those close to us because we feel it's obvious. They must be there. But the day they go, you will realize how much time you wasted. souls lost for me. The question that I have behind is, David, once you have dropped the water, what happens? Do you still long for him? Or do you want to keep the river clean and not your soul clean? And many of us, some of us, most of us, a few of us, God has become a distant story. Because you are too busy taking care of what he blessed you with. And as we close this morning, God said to me, He called me by name. He said, Well, how are Timothy James Masakon? In fact, this morning I think he called me T. You know me and God are tight like that. He said, oh don't take care of the church and forget to take care of you and me.
Thank you, Jesus. Do you have an internal testimony? When I come and hit the plug, are you connected? When I come and switch on the switch, will the water go hot? And he's looking and desiring for a place of relationship mm. where it's not about labels. Thank you, Jesus. It's not about how you look on the outside. It's about what's happening on the inside. Mm. What's really happening on the inside? What's really there on the inside? It's that deeper connection with him. Mm. And when we switch, when we hit the switch, the water will go hot. Mm. And he said, my church has filled the inside. So it has filled the outside with the columns and everything with good things and all those things. But when you switch, when you hit the switch, nothing comes out. Mm. Nothing happens. And he desires an internal, existing, active, alive relationship with you. And this morning, some of you have to get rid of the labels. And start looking internally. You might be a known name, but you have got a name in heaven. You've got a relationship that exists in heaven. Some of you have to teach them the attitude that looks that makes you look like a Christian, but let's talk inside. Is there really an attitude that, that is a Christian attitude? And he desires a relationship with you. And as you sit where you are, pray. Lord, lead me. Lead for a relationship with you. Thank you, Jesus. Let us begin to pray. Precious Father, in the name of Jesus, mighty God, I pray. Here I am, O oh God. You have warned me this morning. You have woken me up. You have, O oh God, Father, resurrected my spirit, my heart. That, Father, I understand that this is not achievement. This is not the epitome of Christianity. Gathering people on a Sunday morning and preaching to them and doing whatever. It's not the epitome of Christianity. But the real and the real epitome of Christianity is having a relationship with you. Lord, I pray in the name of Jesus that Father, deep inside, deep inside I don't lose that connection. Deep inside I don't lose that relationship. Deep inside I don't lose that, oh God, Father, in deep, deep intimacy that I have with you. That Father, I don't find myself in a place where I am so labeled but so disconnected. I don't find myself in a place of where I have preached on this pulpit, on that pulpit, on that station, on this station, but I'm so disconnected. I don't want to find myself, oh God, standing in a place, oh God, where one day when I stand before you, I say I preached every Sunday in your name. I did this in your name. And you still say I do not know you. Father, let it be that it is a genuine relationship. It is a relationship that sits deep inside of me. That works deep inside of me. That, oh God, Father, in the middle of the night, that relationship is existing. In the middle of the day, that relationship is existing. That, oh God, Father, as a dear pregnant for the water, so my soul continues panting after you, thirsting after you, crying after you. Lord God, crying out for you. In the name of Jesus Christ, Lord, I pray right now that, Father, some of us, oh God, we need to be, oh God, Father, have a CPR in our relationships. We need to have a CPR in our relationship with God. That needs to be the breath of life back into our bodies, back into our lives, back We don't lose relationship with you. And Father, even after we've achieved goals, we don't stop growing, oh Father. Even after we've been blessed, we don't stop seeking after his face. Even after we've had a taste of heaven, we do not, oh God, disregard the blessings that you've given us in our lives. But Lord, I don't find myself in a place, oh God, where relationship does no longer exist. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, I thank you that it is your grace that will keep us. And more than anything, Lord, we need to hold on to you. We need to hold on to you. Not to the things you've done for us, but to you. Lord, I pray.
there is a limit that comes because of love. At times, he or she might be crying for this and that. But you don't give it to them, not because you don't love them. Mm. Actually, because you love them, mm. you withhold. Mm. Because you know it will spoil them. Mm. Can we not be spoiled children of God? Mm. Amen. We're so spoiled. And we take care of what he gives. We forget the giver. Thank you, Jesus. Some of you need to go back, resuscitate your relationship with God. Thank you, Jesus. Ever since you got that job, you are not like that. Mm. You're not the way you used to be. Mm. Ever since you, you bought that car, my word, mm. Jesus is a forgotten story. Mm. You need to go back and resuscitate Thank you, Jesus. relationship. Thank you, Jesus. Go back to the city. simple things of waking up in the morning and pray. Amen. Go back to the simple things. The simple things of you where you used to sit with your Bible and write notes while you're reading the word. The simple things. Oh Go back to the simple things. The simple things where you just say, Lord, I love you so much. Thank you, I'm not asking for anything. I just love you. Thank you, Jesus. The simple Thank you. May the Lord help us. Thank you, Jesus. That success does not become our death. Oh we have left. Mm. Yeah. Let's bless the Lord with a clap offering this morning.